Welcome to EPG Patshala. This particular module is about James Baldwin's novel Giovanni's Room. When we normally talk about James Baldwin, we think of him as an African American writer. We think of him as a black writer. And of course, that is very much the way in which he has been regarded by critics, by scholars. So, in a very interesting way, James Baldwin is marked by his race. He is marked by his skin color. And there is a good reason to understand why that happened. Because, of course, James Baldwin has written extensively about race. He has written extensively about what it feels to be black in the United States. He has done all sorts of uh, very important work. He has written essays. He has written novels. He has written also uh, poems and there are many things that he has done in which he has consistently talked about what it feels like to be an African American in the United States. But there is a problem in the sense that when we talk about James Baldwin, we only talk about his race. We do not talk about his sexuality. And because we don't talk about his sexuality, what therefore happens is that a very important part of his identity, therefore, is constantly avoided. And which is exactly the reason why I think we should be looking at this novel, Giovanni's Room, which is a very short novel, but I think it is an important novel because this is a novel that is not typical of James Baldwin. If you want to read a typical James Baldwin, there are various other novels that you could certainly look at. But, for example, you could look at the novels that he wrote when he was talking about how he was an evangelical preacher, when he was, uh, you know, talking um, about religion um, in his local church. So, there are um, novels such as Go Tell It on the Mountain, which you can certainly look at. But the reason why Giovanni's Room becomes a very important novel is because this is a rather interesting novel because this is a novel which is set not in the United States of America but it is set in Paris. So look at the way in which Paris keeps coming back into American literature. We have seen how Paris plays a very important role in the work of Henry James. We have seen how Paris plays an important role in Edith Wharton. We have seen how Paris has played a very important role in various other American writers' works. So it is Paris that is the setting for Giovanni's Room. The novel primarily focuses on the subject of social and psychological alienation and the pressures that the characters face to fit into society. Social and psychological estrangement operate along at least four axes. They operate along the axes of class, ethnicity, sexuality, and nationality or citizenship. The novel's protagonists, David and Giovanni, are non-French visitors, immigrants, they are homosexual, and they are lower middle class or poor. So therefore, we look at the way in which when we discuss an identity of a person, we cannot only discuss the person's race, we cannot only discuss the person's nationality, we cannot only discuss the person's ethnicity, we cannot only discuss the person's gender or sexuality. All of these aspects of an identity have to be taken into consideration before we form a more complete, a more holistic idea of what is it that constitutes our identity. Before we move on to the discussion of the novel, let me tell you a little bit more about James Baldwin. He was born in 1924 as the eldest son of a poor African-American family. His mother left his father, who was a drug addict, and the family moved from Harlem in Manhattan, New York, where she married a pastor. Baldwin studied in Harlem, but was unhappy with school for its racial segregation and hostility towards black pupils. The young James Baldwin was a member of the Pentecostal church and converted to seek remedies for personal crises. 
He was, however, very quickly disillusioned with the discrimination and corruption within the church and abandoned Christianity. However, religion plays a very important role in his novels and he frequently goes back to religion over and over again. He left New York for Paris in 1948 at the age of 24 where he spent the rest of his life till his death in 1987. So we are looking at an American author who is clearly regarded as an American author but who spent so much of his life not in America. He's, he spent so much of his life on the continent, in Paris, in France. It was Baldwin's experience of racism in Harlem that primarily drove him to leave for Paris. Many of his works feature black and gay characters, although Baldwin resisted being labelled as an African-American writer while at the same time writing extensively about African-American issues. His second novel, Giovanni's Room, was published in 1956. And interestingly enough, as I told you, this is a novel without any black characters. But at the same time, it certainly deals with racism, it deals with exploitation, and it deals with homophobia in France. Before we move on, we can say that what is homophobia? Homophobia is that un reasonable fear of homosexuality. What else can we say about the author? Well, the predominant theme of his works had to do with the human quest for a coherent sense of selfhood, independent of social and familial constraints. Most of his works addressed racism, which of course is the hatred, the unreasonable hatred of people who simply have a different skin color or belong to a different race, and homophobia, which is this prejudice that people have towards homosexual people. He wrote critiques of the tense relationship between Christianity and black Muslim nationalism because he very often felt that black Muslim nationalism and Christianity, they somehow may seem to be conf in conflict with each other. His homosexuality soured his relations with the black nationalists because what you have to understand is that there was a, a movement in America of black nationalists. Now what did the black nationalists believe? They believed that there should be um, uh, an identity, there should be a, a valorized identity of the African American man. But what they also managed to do was to somehow present this African-American man as heterosexual. So therefore, any black man who was not heterosexual automatically was left out of the movement. His later works from the 1970s to the 80s dealt more specifically with homophobia and homosexuality, so much so that he became an inspiration for the gay rights movement and a major writer to explore queerness and race. Now we come to the discussion of the characters in the novel. Well, David is uh, the first person narrated in the novel, which means the novel is written as though um, it is David who is talking. He is a blonde American man who has moved to Paris from New York. He has um, a relationship with um, Giovanni um, in the absence of his girlfriend, Hella. Hella is David's girlfriend um, and David um, meets Hella in France. She goes to Spain to contemplate David's marriage proposal, returns and accepts it but abandons him when she discovers his homosexuality. Giovanni, who is the person who is the character who has given the novel its name. Giovanni is a poor Italian bartender. Giovanni falls in love with David, but he is shattered when he leaves him for Hella. He is executed at the end for murdering his ex-employer, Guillaume. Guillaume is an acquaintance of David's who runs a gay bar in Paris. There are also other characters such as Jacques. Jacques is a wealthy American businessman from Belgium and another acquaintance of David's. There are other minor characters such as Joey, who is a boy from Brooklyn, Manhattan, with whom David had his first homosexual experience. There is Ellen, 
David's father's sister, that is to say David's aunt, an excessively made up woman who knits and is anxious that David will be adversely affected by his father's drunken behavior and his relationship with a woman named Beatrice, whom he later marries. There is, of course, Madame Clotilde, a woman who owns the restaurant in Les Halles. Les Halles, of course, is a, a, a part of, of Paris. Now, there are other characters. There is, for example, the caretaker. The caretaker is born in Italy. She moved to France as a child. Her husband's name is Mario. They lost all their money in the Second World War and two of their sons died. Their son that is alive is also called Mario. David stays in her house after he and Giovanni separate. And there is of course the character of David's father. His relationship with David is characterized by an artificial affection. There is to say not a genuine affection between the father and the son. He cannot bear to acknowledge that they are not close and feels guilty that he may have failed to raise his son. He remarries Beatrice after David is grown up but before the action of the novel begins. What is it that happens in the novel itself? So let's discuss the plot. The plot is, as I told you, David, the central character of the novel, moves from Manhattan in New York to Paris. His girlfriend, Hella, has left France to Spain for Spain in order to contemplate his offer of marriage. So David has just proposed to Hella and she has gone away to contemplate the proposal. That is to say, she wants to decide whether she is going to marry David or not. David runs out of money to pay for his hotel and asks an acquaintance, Jacques, for money. They meet at a gay bar run by Guillaume. David meets Giovanni who is an Italian bartender who is working at that bar. They become friends and the latter describes his first meeting with Guillaume and the free dinner he was given. David and Giovanni end up having sex and the two move in together. David reveals his relationship with Hella to Giovanni. Giovanni is not threatened by the relationship and the two seem to know the relationship will end with Hella's return. Giovanni is unable to bear their separation when Hella returns. David disappears for some days and asks his father to send him money to marry Hella. David later meets Giovanni and tells him that he cannot be with him. He later sees Giovanni with Jacques. He learns their relationship is over and discovers the news of Guillaume's murder by Giovanni. David imagines Guillaume may have been murdered uh, for Guillaume was perhaps asking sexual favors in exchange for a job and then falling back on the promise. So on the day of Giovanni's execution, David leaves Paris with Hella to the south of France. David is consumed with guilt over Giovanni's execution. He goes to Nice alone and when he spends nights with a sailor, Hella follows him there and discovers his homosexuality. She leaves him bitterly for America while David is left with his guilt. He is haunted by images of Giovanni's execution. That is really the story. But once we get into the novel, let us then talk about the narrative analysis. What exactly is going on with David? David's self-estrangement inhibits the possibility of loving anyone. What is being meant by self-estrangement? What it really means is that David is unable to confront himself. He cannot face his own sexuality. And because he cannot do that, that automatically means that he will never be able to fully love anyone because of the simple reason that he hasn't fully accepted himself. The novel dramatizes David's desire for men and his internalized homophobia. That is to say, when a gay man is actually homophobic because he hates his own homosexuality. He is constantly threatened by the loss of masculinity because a lot of people believe that a homosexual man is not sufficiently masculine. So David is very worried about the possibility that he may not be fully masculine. The novel begins by anticipating Giovanni's execution and then through a flashback recounts the events that lead up to the execution. So the novel begins at the end and then through the rest of the novel we come to know how the action and the story unfolds.
The narrative is framed by David's inability to overcome his sexual impulses that impede love and intimacy. His homophobia arises not as a response to sex, but to the possibility of same-sex love and intimacy. So it is not as though David does not have homosexual sex. What is important is that he simply cannot understand how two men can be homosexual and have a lasting relationship. And that is where David fails. In David and Giovanni's conversations, there, emerge, there emerges a critique of an image of American progress that is built on the suppression of a historical memory of immigration from Europe. So look at the way in which when Giovanni's room is set in Europe, that is to say Paris, when it is set in Europe, James Baldwin is doing something rather interesting. He is actually trying to, um, as it were, understand that much of American literature, whether it acknowledges it or not, is perhaps uh, majorly influenced by European culture and, and the history of European migration is also something that perhaps should be acknowledged. The narrative of American progress and mastery has no love, pain, death that would interrupt an imaginary ideal of happiness which is rooted in capitalism and in apparent choices. So therefore, we already have James Baldwin, like many other authors that we have been discussing in this, mo in this particular course so far, there are many, many authors who have interrogated, who have questioned, who have challenged the American dream. And in a very important way, we find James Baldwin doing something very, very similar. He is also trying to understand what exactly is the American dream and whether this American dream actually does not cloak a lot of unhappiness, a lot of suffering, a lot of love, pain and death. Giovanni's Room is also a critique of class relations in France. Set in the decades after the Second World War, it alludes to the destruction of the city and its gradual reconstruction. In this case, I would certainly want you to think about um, Henry James's novel, The Ambassadors, which is enormous, which is very much of that action is actually set in Paris. So therefore, there are going to be occasionally these novels uh, that are going to be written by American writers that are set in Paris. So therefore, Paris in particular and France in general occupies a very important uh, position as far as American literature is concerned. The novel is therefore a reflection on class relations and on the question of citizenship. Giovanni's sexually and economically exploitative relationship with Guillaume is a case in point. Guillaume's citizenship and his position as owner of a gay bar gives him the power over Giovanni. Giovanni is a poor Italian immigrant who loses his wife and child and leaves behind his happy bucolic life in Italy in search of employment. He is helpless against Guillaume's sexual advances, but his efficiency as a worker grants him a work permit and greater protection from Guillaume. So clearly, we see a kind of economic exploitation that is happening, but we also see a kind of sexual exploitation that is also being perhaps suggested. Soon after Guillaume's murder, the newspapers imagine the murder as the death of French history, glory and manhood. I would certainly want you to take a look at the word manhood. Look at the way in which in many, many countries, a sense of national pride is very often a very masculine pride. So therefore, when you think about a patriot, very often it is the image of a man that is invoked. When you think about uh, the figure of a martyr, it is very often the image of a man that is invoked. So therefore, there is a very close relationship between nationality and masculinity. And that is something which perhaps James Baldwin is trying to suggest when he says that the murder of Guillaume becomes the death of French history, glory, and most importantly, manhood. Giovanni inhabits a poor suburb of Paris and his relationship with David begins and ends in the margins of the city. Tied to this story of exploitation is the question of Christianity that is decried when it fails to remedy human loss only to reappear in the end as a vision of death and potential salvation. Now, you therefore have to understand that when Giovanni's room is being written, James Baldwin is certainly being quite critical of Christianity. And he's being critical of Christianity, if you remember his life, is because he was early on disenchanted with Christianity. So the disenchantment is certainly there in the novel. 
So you should be able to detect that. David realizes that his love for Giovanni is restricted to his body. His inability to love anyone cannot be attributed to just his homophobia or to just a feared loss of masculinity. So we are actually looking at the way in which David has perhaps not really understood himself at all. Here is a person who is actually lacking in self-knowledge. And because the person is lacking in self-knowledge, he will never be able to fully love anyone, whether it be Hela or whether it be Giovanni. Loneliness for Giovanni, David and Jacques is a function of self-estrangement that operates through a divorce between love and lust. So while there is a lot of lust that is present, love somehow is not present. So there is an indiscriminate lust that substitutes one body for another and this loveless lust is there as a recurring motif um, in, in the novel. The inability to love is described as an insensate state of bodily entrapment. Now what do I mean by this? It actually means that it is almost like a disability. It is almost like a disability when a person is unable to love. An image that Giovanni uses for David is that of the mirrored image of the male body that conveys an illusory sense of power and autonomy. So it is almost as though the male body is there but it is there to convey a sense of power and that is what I think um, turns out to be very toxic when we think about David's perception of what masculinity consists of. Giovanni believes David is incapable of loving anyone because he is narcissistic. He is very much narcissistically invested in his own masculine body image. This is an isolating and precarious position that can never get the reassurance it longs for because of course narcissism prevents you from actually uh, carrying out a fulfilling relationship with anyone because you are so completely involved with your own self. To be able to love would imply a willingness to be vulnerable, a breakdown, a reconfiguration of borders between self and the other. The novel does not end with a sense of closure. David is left with his feelings of guilt and salvation, if any, can only be obtained by enduring guilt and loneliness in the hope of finding love. So of course this is a tragedy, the novel does not end happily, but perhaps the novel is trying to say something, which is that if we are going to look for love, then we must, before looking for love, understand exactly we, we, who we are. So therefore, self-knowledge is very important before we start to seek love. Now, what we really uh, have been doing so far is broadly and very, very quickly trying to go through the major themes in this particular novel, Giovanni's Room, to again remind you of the points that Giovanni's room is making and James Baldwin is making, he is making a very central point as to what constitutes identity. This is something that we really should pay a lot of attention to. What constitutes identity? Who makes, what makes you, you? Who are you? Are you your nationality? Are you your gender? Are you your sexuality? Are you your ethnicity? Are you your culture? Who exactly are you? So therefore, Giovanni's room seems to suggest that we are not one thing only. We are created by several socio-cultural forces. Socio-cultural forces such as nationality, religion, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, ability. And all of these forces, they to gather together and constitute our notion of identity. That is the one thing. The second thing that you have to be very careful about is then if that is, our, if that is what our own identity is, then who is the other? Who becomes the other? Well, the way in which we normally think about the other is that the other is everything that we are not. But that is not a very good way of thinking because if we try to look at other people, we will find that we perhaps have more in common with them than we admit. So this is a novel that asks us to question the construction of self, the construction of the other. But it also asks us to consider very carefully the notion of how we accept ourselves. Do we accept ourselves 
or are we ashamed of ourselves? If we are ashamed of ourselves, does that shame come from something that is inherently wrong in us? Or does it come from the sense of the fact that the society has asked us to be ashamed of ourselves? So is the shame something that comes out of our own ethical, moral understanding of our own selves? Or is the shame something that is thrust upon us by society? These are the rather crucial questions that James Baldwin seems to be asking in this very powerful, very short book. And in doing so, he is also perhaps wanting us to understand what exactly is American, who is an American. Because once he has written a novel which is set in Paris, and when he himself is an American writer, he is also therefore perhaps asking what happens to an American when he is taken out of America. What happens to his citizenship? What happens to his national identity? So there are all of these questions that are very beautifully presented. And as you read this book, I'm sure you will see that there are several layers that are basically trying to achieve um, a certain understanding of how identities are constructed. And that is what we have to keep in mind, not only when we are reading James Baldwin, but also when we read other authors in this particular course. Thank you.